shown you how to prep the vegetables for the soup so i'm just going to take one a medium sized potato and we're just going to peel it first you wash the potato peel it and then just uh, slice it into half and then into these little small cubes so similarly uh, you can chop up the onions and the tomatoes also as i've shown you here and then we'll start with the recipe So now that all our veggies and everything are ready let me take you through the ingredients so here i have kept the potato in the in some water so that it doesn't blacken that is one medium sized potato this is two small tomatoes one med one and a half uh, medium sized onion this is one chicken soup cube this is about half a cup of macaroni one teaspoon of black pepper powder and you can use salt if required now here i've heated about 1 tablespoon of oil and i'm going to add my onion and i'm going to fry the onion till it becomes translucent on a low to medium flame then i'm going to add my tomatoes and i'm going to cook the tomatoes till they're nice and mushy So this should take you about a minute till both of them are fried. I'm going to drain all the water out of the potatoes and I'm going to add the potato cubes. Fry the potatoes a bit. Next goes in about 2 cups of water. Mix everything well. I'm going to add the macaroni, add the cheese, uh, add the soup cube and the pepper powder. Give everything a stir. You can also give this a little bit of a taste and see that whether you need to add salt or no because the soup cube has enough of salt. And then we're going to boil uh, keep the flame on high till the till it comes to a boil. We're going to stir in between so that the macaroni doesn't stick to the bottom. And then we're just going to simmer this for about 10 to 15 minutes, stirring in between. And we're going to boil this mixture till the potatoes are cooked well and the macaroni is cooked well. And that's it, friends. Your lovely Goan macaroni soup is all ready. You can have it piping hot and enjoy it. So friends, today we're going to make this beautiful chutney out of curry leaves and this goes so well with some dosas, idlis, rice and many other things. So let's start with today's recipe. So here I've taken about a cup of fresh curry leaves. I've given them a thorough wash and then I'm going to put them on a kitchen napkin or a kitchen towel and pat them completely dry. That's very important that the leaves are nice and dry. So just pat them onto a kitchen towel or a kitchen napkin and set them aside. So now our leaves are all ready to be used. So about a cup of them. Now I'm using one tablespoon of udit dal, one tablespoon of dhane seeds or coriander or dhania, 
half a tablespoon of cumin seeds or jeera seeds, one fourth tablespoon of asafoetida or hing, three fourth of a tablespoon of red chili powder or as per your taste, three four tablespoon of jaggery or gool, and one teaspoon of dry tamarind. This is two tablespoons of peanut powder, about five cloves of garlic, and some salt to taste. Now, first, I've heated a pan. and i'm just going to roast these curry leaves till they are nice and crispy so this will take about 3 to 4 minutes on a low to medium flame we not added any oil we're just going to roast them till the curry leaves or the kadhi patta becomes nice and crispy so you get the lovely aroma of the curry leaves as you roast them and it's a beautiful aroma so you can see now that the texture has changed and it's become more on a grayish green side and it's a little on the crispy side so roast this this is the most important part for that perfect chutney texture so you're going to uh, roast them completely till they're nice and crispy so even if you press them you'll get this lovely crispy sound so once they're roasted we are going to transfer them into a bowl you can turn off the heat at this point and now in the same pan after wiping the pan nice and clean we are going to add just about 1 teaspoon of oil now once the oil starts to heat up we are going to add the udid dal and we are going to fry this udid dal for at least about half a minute next we are going to add the coriander seeds and again fry them this is on a very low uh, heat next we are going to add the cumin seeds or the jeera seeds and we are going to fry that well too next we are going to add the hing or asafoetida and fry that a little next we are going to add the garlic and we are going to fry the garlic too So it turns a little light brown in color. So all this on a low uh, flame. So fry this well. And then after about a whole minute or so, once everything is fried well and the lovely aromas of the garlic and the spices. uh you know start filling your kitchen and just put off the flame and add the peanut powder so remember to put off the flame when you add the peanut powder the reason being is that the peanut powder is already roasted because this is homemade peanut powder all i've done is i've roasted the peanuts very well then i've peeled them and then i've ground them to a coarse powder now we're going to add this mixture to our mixer or blender so add them and no water is to be used in this chutney at all next we're going to add the crispy curry leaves that we roasted next i'm going to add some salt to taste next goes in the red chili powder then goes in the jaggery or the gool now i have grated my gool so that it is of a nice uh, consistency and uh, you know so just grate it on a normal cheese grater and then i've added the tamarind flakes and then i'm going to grind this to a very fine powder so just mix everything well and again blitz it once or twice and your chutney powder is all ready from the lovely curry leaves this uh, my entire kitchen has got this beautiful aroma of this lovely chutney and believe me friends it's so so delicious it goes well with even plain curd rice or anything now uh, one tip over here is that you can store this chutney for months together just ensure that you put it into a nice dry clean glass bottle with a nice air tight cap 
and another tip i'd like to give you here is whenever you're using the chutney use a very dry spoon ensure that your spoon is nice and dry don't use a damp spoon don't use a wet spoon keep so that your spoon is completely dry and also keep this in a nice cool place you don't need to refrigerate it but keep it in a nice dark cool place in your kitchen and see that the lid is nice and airtight that way this chutney remains for you know months together so all of us have got so many curry leaves in our garden so this is a very nice way to use it and it's very healthy also so i hope you like today's lovely recipe i hope you try out this recipe and let me know in the comments box how you like today's recipe don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up by clicking on the thumbs up icon i need those thumbs ups and also if you haven't subscribed to my channel then please do and uh, hit the red subscribe button that you see below this video Once you have subscribed, a little bell icon will show up. Click that because that way, whenever I put up a new recipe, you get a message for the same. So, friends, let's start making this beautiful coconut rice, sweet coconut rice, or narari bhat. Now for this, I've taken a cup of one and a half cup of rice. I've taken basmati. I've washed it and soaked it for about five to ten minutes. Then I've uh, boiled about two and a half to three cups of water. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to add this rice, and we're going to cook it till it's par boiled. That is, it shouldn't be completely cooked. It should be just a little bit undercooked. And then I'm just going to strain out all the excess water and keep the rice aside. Now our rice is ready. I'll let me take you through the other ingredients. Now here I have a cup of freshly grated coconut, a cup of sugar, four cloves, about an inch of uh, cinnamon, uh, two uh, cardamoms or elaichi. I've just ground them to a powder. Some few stra saffron strands of kesar, which I've soaked in some warm milk, and some uh, almonds to just garnish our dish with. Now here in a pan, I've heated about two and a half tablespoons of ghee or clarified butter, and once it heats up, I'm going to add the cloves and the cinnamon. That will nicely flavor the ghee. Now I'm going to add my freshly grated coconut, and I'm going to fry this for at least about five to seven minutes till the coconut. You get the lovely aroma of the coconut. Let it get nicely fried. uh you know in this lovely uh flavored ghee or uh toop or clarified butter so the color also will change to just a little bit of a you know light golden brown so this is very important if you want the rice to have the beautiful flavor of the coconut so we're going to fry this now i'm going to add my cardamom powder or my elaichi powder and mix that in well now the sugar goes in now we're going to uh, you know roast this or fry this till all of the sugar completely dissolves we don't want any of the sugar granules in the rice so we're going to again you uh, you know uh, just fry it or saute it for about 5 to 7 minutes till all of the sugar and the uh, coconut comes together very very well so this is also a very important step so 5 to 7 minutes and use freshly grated coconut for this dish because it really elevates the flavor of this dish so like i said another 5 to 7 minutes in frying or roasting or sauteing the coconut with the spices and the sugar now for those of you who don't have access to fresh coconut i'm sure i'm going to get questions on that yes you can go with desiccated coconut i mean if you don't have fresh coconut what are you going to do so uh, you know you can use it now i'm going to add the rice now see that the rice has come to you know room temperature now i'm going to add my saffron milk and don't uh, stir the mixture very a much just very lightly lift it up because we don't want the grains to you know a kind of uh, uh, get mushy that is why we pour par boil the basmati rice and i'm going to cover and cook this and in intervals i'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir so i'm going to cover and cook this for another 5 to 7 minutes This is a lovely dish, friends, and do try it out. And today, being Narali Purnima, I said this is 
the best dish to make i also have my coconut uh, barfi recipe or as you call it narala cha vadya i will link a, uh, leave the link below you can go and try it out so now our rice is nicely cooked i've switched off the heat and i'm just going to garnish it with some lovely chopped up uh, almonds you can also add kishmish or cashew nuts or any dry fruits of your choice and now all we have to do is just serve it nice and hot everybody and welcome to akshita's recipes thank you so much for stopping by well sandwiches is something which i think all of us love to have and you know sometimes when you're just walking on the road on the street and you see this lovely sandwich uh, vendor your mouth just starts to water and you feel like okay let me just have it so why not make your own sandwiches at home and it's not that difficult i have a load of sandwich recipes on my channel and i will leave a link for all of them uh, in my description box as well as in my comments box but today i'm going to be showing you a very simple sandwich which anybody can make and i'm going to be explaining to you step by step as to how you go about making this sandwich it's so easy it's so simple that you can just get the sandwich ready in no time and you're all set to go it's great tiffin item it's a great uh, anytime snack and i'm telling you friends it's really simple so let's begin with this recipe but before that let me remind you that to give this video a big like if you like this recipe don't forget to hit the red subscribe button become a part of akshita's recipes family go and check out my channel i have loads of recipes and lots and lots of vlogs where you'll get to know me better so let's get started with making this easy vegetable sandwich So friends I've started by taking two medium sized potatoes that I have boiled now for boiling these potatoes I put them into a pressure pan and I have uh, put some water just to cover the potatoes and uh once you have one whistle on a high fire you can just uh, simmer the cooker for about uh 5 to 10 minutes and then take out the potatoes and they have to be uh at room temperature then we're just going to peel the potatoes and cut them this way into rounds now the next step that i'm going to be showing you is how to make some green chutney for this uh sandwich now here i have some fresh coriander which i have thoroughly washed actually soaked in salt water for about 5 to 10 minutes and then given it a good rinse here i have about 10 to 12 light green chilies the less spicy kind i have an inch of ginger i have about 4 cloves of garlic and some lime and some salt i use himalayan pink salt now so all we have to do is put all of this into our blender or mixer and grind it to a nice and smooth paste with the juice of half a lemon the lemon helps to retain the lovely light green color as well as it gives a lovely flavor to this green chutney so here our green coriander chutney is all ready now we're just going to assemble the sandwich together now i like to use whole wheat brown bread you can use white bread you can use any bread that you regularly use all we're going to do is cut off the sides if you want to keep the sides you can do that as well but i'm going to be cutting off the sides and don't worry i use those sides in a lot of other recipes or i just make bread crumbs of them okay now after we cut up uh the sides we're going to keep our chutney ready we're going to use some chaat masala and we're going to be using the potatoes that we just sliced up so first i'm going to butter the bread all the four slices i'm just making two sandwiches butter it evenly and 
After that, we're just going to apply some lovely green chutney onto just one of the slices of each of the sandwich. That is two of the slices right now. And see that the chutney is evenly spread all over. Then we're just going to be putting the potato slices. Cut them as thin as possible. And then we're just going to sprinkle some chaat masala. That gives an awesome flavor to this uh, sandwich. Just going to press it down. I'm going to be doing the same with the other one too. Now you can go ahead and add some more ingredients like tomatoes or cucumber or onion as you like. But I just like it plain and simple. And you can cut it triangular, you can cut it lengthwise, you can make it into four small triangles. And that's it friends, your lovely sandwiches are all ready. So what I like to do is I always like to keep some boiled potatoes in my refrigerator. And they stay for about one or two days. And then I always like to make a big batch of green chutney and keep in my fridge because that chutney is so versatile. You can use it for shea parata puri, you can use it for sandwiches, you can use it for alu paratha. It's just endless. You can use that chutney for so many other things. So I hope you like today's sandwich. I have many, many other sandwich recipes uploaded on my channel. There is some chicken club sandwich, which is just amazing and yummy. There is some plain wedged grill sandwich, which was also a delight. I have a plain cheese and chutney sandwich as well. And I also have the other kind of sandwiches, which is the deep fried one, which is the bread pakoras, as we call them. I have more than uh, 280 recipes on my channel and a lot of vlogs where you get to know a little bit about me better. So I request you to go ahead and uh, explore my channel. I have created playlists. So if you go to my homepage, there is a small search button on my homepage. You can just go and type what you're looking for or you can go to the playlists and you can uh, go to the sandwich part. I have even omelet sandwiches. I have a spinach uh, and corn grilled sandwich. There are just loads of them and I have so many other easy recipes. My motto is to make recipes quick and easy. Of course, there are some recipes which take a little more time, but the end result is fabulous like my risotto recipe and there's some chicken sukkah recipes. So I have loads and loads of them. So go ahead, explore Akshita's recipes. We require for these waters. They're very few. Here I'm using just half a cup of whole wheat flour. I have one fourth cup of rice flour. I have one fourth cup of powdered sugar. Two tablespoons of fine rava or semolina. One fourth cup of clarified butter or ghee which I've just lightly melted. One fourth cup of coconut milk. And some salt to taste. So let's see how... We make these beautiful vades or vades. Now in a large mixing bowl, I'm just going to add all the three dry ingredients. That is the wheat flour, the rice flour, the powdered sugar, as well as the semolina or the rava. I'm going to add a pinch of salt or as per your taste. Then I'm going to add about half the quantity of my melted clarified butter. And I'm going to use... A little bit of the coconut milk at a time and then I'm going to knead everything to a smooth yet a firm dough. Now the coconut milk that I am using I've just used a packet coconut milk. I've just taken some water, warmed it up in my microwave, added the coconut powder and I've just got a nice thick coconut milk. Now if you want to use fresh coconut and get the coconut milk that is also great. Now the clarified butter, I've just melted it because we are in the winter and the ghee tends to solidify. So I've just taken a little bit in a glass bottle and just heated it in my microwave. That just makes it easier to work with. And then of course the most important thing is we have to set this dough aside for at least three to four hours if we want the perfect waters. Now after waiting for three to four hours, we're just going to knead our dough a bit till it becomes nice and flexible and nice and smooth to work with. So here I love to work on this flat 
surface that I have in my kitchen for all my baking and kneading. It really, I have more space and, you know, I just love working on it. So now I'm just going to divide the dough into two halves because that way it becomes more easier. And then I'm just going to roll it out to about an inch of thickness. We want a little bit of a thicker uh, dough and we're going to cut it out with some I'm just using a regular vati you can use any round sharp object to cut it up into circles and then just make all the waters put them on a separate plate now from the quantity of ingredients that I'm using I got about 20 waters which was I think enough for my family of four so uh, you know if you want to make some more then you just increase the quantity as per uh, the measurements given and then I'm just going to keep them all aside. Now, in the meantime, I've also kept some oil for deep frying. I'm using regular cooking oil. And then just going to put one water at a time because I want to concentrate on them. I don't want to overload my pan. And, you know, I want them to nicely puff up and become a nice light golden brown. Now, uh, keep the flame from low to medium, not on a very high flame. And uh, just uh, let them puff up and once they become a light golden brown color, you can just drain the excess oil first and then just put them on some kitchen napkins so that they uh, completely, you know, all the oil, excess oil is drained off. And that's it friends, your waters are all ready. You can also make these waters, just store them in your refrigerator for a day or two and then just fry them whenever you uh, need to uh, serve them. They are simply delicious and you need to try this out. Make a small quantity like I did and then, you know, uh, if you want to make a bigger quantity, then just double or triple the ingredients. So there it is, friends. Our waters are all ready and they have a quite a big shelf life. You know, if you store them in an airtight container, they last for a week.